My name's Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tag video, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Hope you're all having a wonderful weekend as it comes to a close, unfortunately. So what do I have for you today? Well, I have a very AMD-focused video for you, in fact, a purely AMD-focused video, as we're going to start things off with the AMD 600 series GPU project, which we're going to be spending, I'd say, most of the video talking about, and then we're going to move on to some pretty insane overclocks for the Ryzen 7 2700X. Now, speaking of the 2700X, there is something I want to revisit. Now, you may remember yesterday that I discussed the review that was done by El Chapuza Informatico with an X470 motherboard. Now, I did actually forget to include a very important segment, so I will throw my hands up and say, that my bad, apologies for that. But I think it's better to correct it and just admit your mistake than to just leave it incorrect. So I'm going to, of course, include a link to this video in the description to that video so that people are aware. Anyway, as I said, the 600 series. What do? So of course the rumours have been flying thick and fast as to what AMD are actually cooking for us for not only this year but of course next year and beyond and there have been rumours that the company is working on another project other than the 7nm Navi and obviously the 7nm Vega refresh that we keep talking about as well but apparently they've got something cooking that's going to be here much much sooner and also sounds really really intriguing. Now the reason this is intriguing actually begins with what the project is called. Now, usually code names are, well, code names, they may or may not sound silly, but a lot of the time they don't really mean a whole lot. But I think this is relevant because it's called Project Zen. So basically, what has happened is that after Raja left the company, there was a team assembled of Zen engineers at RTG who basically have been brought into the fold to drastically improve the performance of the GPU designs by working alongside the already established teams over at RTG. So essentially what they're doing here is bringing their Zen expertise to what the RTG team have been working on and obviously their breadth and depth of knowledge when it comes to graphics cards and they're going to apply that Zen way of thinking into a graphics card space. Now this could be really, really interesting, but you're probably thinking, okay, what do you mean by this? Like, what does this actually mean to take what they've learned with Zen and put it into a graphics card? What does that actually have an effect? And I think the most relevant part that most of you are probably going to be knowing what I'm about to say is how the cores actually work in Zen itself. So as you're probably aware, assuming you have an eight core CPU, you'll have two CCXs within Zen itself, but inside that are four cores per CCX. Obviously, this equals eight. Fairly basic maths, yes. Quick maths, as you might say. This does actually tie into previous rumours that we have seen regarding Navi, the fact that it's scalable. So, again, with how Ryzen is made with smaller modules coming together so that the process itself can be shrunk, that obviously can be applied to what's going on with this Project Zen, which could be the AMD 600 series. Now, of course, most of this is pure speculation, just do keep that in mind. But what's most interesting is that apparently, according to what's being said around the industry, is that we could actually see this this year or next year at the latest now previously we've heard that of course we're not going to be getting anything from amd until 2020 but we could expect a ton of improvements from this now it's obviously going to be based on an iterative iterative excuse me version of gcm we're going to be probably seeing efficiency improvements so it's a fairly safe assumption that we're going to be seeing a lot of features that were in vega put into place here but in combination, again, with that scalable thinking that was used in Ryzen. Now, obviously, this is pure rumour at this point, but I wouldn't actually be surprised if this was real, because it does actually tie into some comments made in an official AMD video. So what do you, um, as you now work on our graphics technologies as part of our Radeon Technologies group, what do you take with you from the experience of building Zen into building our next generation of GPU products? Well, a lot of what we did in Zen was really trying to, to push well beyond what we thought we could do. And I think that is something that we are trying to do in the graphics space as well to make a bigger leap forward. Um, we've pulled in some of the expertise from the, the, gra the cores team, the microprocessor cores team into the graphics team right now, kind of helping with our methodology 
and you know improving our frequency and you know performance and power um, and just taking the the best that we have already developed in house and trying to make sure that we're using that same those same improvements across the company. Now, obviously, that's not exactly her saying, "Yep, this is confirmed. I'm a time traveler. I'm now confirming that this is a thing. This is definitely what's happening." But it definitely ties into what she just said, as I'm sure you will agree. So, where are we hoping to see improvements other than what I've already said? Well, obviously, the the main thing that you want to see is an improvement in clock speed and power consumption. Now Polaris and Vega, as I'm sure you're painfully aware, are all very, very power hungry. And obviously if you decrease the power consumption, you get less heat and also get as a result a more stable clock speed because of course as the heat increases, the clock speed will decrease to try and get some cooling on there. Now as Paul himself discussed in the Vega 56 clocking review, and you will see this linked in the description below this video, is that if you overclock Vega's memory, you'd get a better performance jump than if you overclock the core itself. Now this was actually relevant to Polaris as well, as both Vega and Polaris were sadly very memory bandwidth starved. So this is another area where we'd hope to see improvement as well, but even if we just saw, just for example, even if we see the exact same problem in place or the 600 series or whatever it ends up being called, but with less power consumption, we're still going to see an improvement because of what I just said. So it's also possible as well that this will tie into the Vega 7NM rumours, because of course we discussed just the other day that there's a report going around that Vega 7NM isn't going to be for gamers, it's going to be for data centre. So it's entirely possible that we will see Vega 7NM and this Project Zen GPU release at the same time. So obviously you can go out and buy the Vega 7NM if you want, but obviously it's not meant for gaming, it's not given the best performance that AMD are currently offering. But then you'll have what this is, they're saying, hey, I'm for gaming, I'm an optimised, I'm improved versus Vega, blah, 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 blah. And then maybe a couple of years later we'll get Navi, because if AMD follow their original plan, which was reported to be planned for 2020 that basically means that nvidia rules the roost until then because at the moment amd have no answer to not only what nvidia have currently available but you know the one one series the one one thousand series excuse me it took me a while to get there but I got there eventually so the one one eighty or twenty eighty it would end up ever it ends up being called you know volta or ampere or touring or whatever it ends up being named if AMD were to follow their original rumoured plan or reported plan, I suppose, just to say, NVIDIA would basically have no competition in the high-end space at all. So, obviously, AMD would like to at least have an option, an entry into the market, as it were. So this does actually make sense to me, but again, this is all pure speculation, so do keep that in mind. I must say, I'm very, very interested to see. I think this could actually bring some pretty interesting improvements and does go to show you exactly what a change of management can bring. Now, I'm not saying this was Raj's fault or anything like that, because obviously I wasn't there, I don't know what happened with Vega, I don't know if there were funding issues, I don't know if he spent half the time standing on his head. You know, I'm being a bit facetious here, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not blaming him, I'm just saying sometimes fresh ideas can really change things, and I think this is definitely an interesting idea. Whether or not this will actually come to fruition is another matter entirely, but again, according to the reports, this will be 2018 slash 2019, so it won't be too long before we see the official reveal and, of course, following leaks if this is true. So let's go on to the Ryzen 7 2700X and the insane overclock that I mentioned. So, as I said, this is a pretty nuts benchmark and just shy of beating the world record for all Ryzen processors. Now again, this is the Ryzen 7 2700X, and this particular person has managed to push that particular processor to 5.884 GHz or 5884 MHz. Now as I already said, this has just missed the world record by a hair, 21 MHz short to beat the world record for all Ryzen processors but it is the world record for the Ryzen 7 family. Now we also see a pretty nuts result for the Ryzen 5 2600X as well, bringing in 5882.97 megahertz. Now, obviously this isn't something that you or I are going to be able to duplicate because this was done with liquid nitrogen, so uh, do keep that in mind, but I would fully expect to see people be like, all right, challenge accepted, 
and the sort of people who try to break these world records see if they can crack this and get that 21 megahertz to get the world record for all Ryzen processors but for the moment this one has the crown for the Ryzen 7 family and that is a pretty insane result. Again, not something for you or I because, you know, liquid nitrogen, I don't know about you, but I don't have a, a vat of that hanging around in my garage, but you know, maybe you do, I'm, I'm not gonna judge. But it's still pretty damn impressive that it can get up to that point and this definitely show that there is a huge amount of room for improvement when it comes to the future of Ryzen and of course what AMD have in store post Ryzen as well. As I said, however, we're going to finish things up with a bit of a revisit to the 2700X review. Now, the reason I wanted to touch on this is because I actually didn't include something that I meant to include, and I will blame this entirely on my pure exhaustion yesterday, because day was such a yesterday was such a crazily busy day. But I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. I didn't include this that I meant to, so my apologies for that. But again. As I already said, I felt it's better to correct it. So, what do I miss out? Well, I actually missed out the Cinebench and X64, as well as Ada. Sorry, apologies, not Ada. 3D Mark, Firestrike, and Spy Time. So, what do we have for Cinebench, first of all? So, as you see, the results here for the 2700X are pretty damn impressive, as you see it reigning far above that of the 8700K. We see a significant difference in results, with a result of 1778 for the 2700X and then a result of 1425 for the 8700K and of course it absolutely stomps all over the 6700K and it does show a nice improvement over the 1700X as well and of course the Ryzen 5s are a sig show a significant difference between the two. Then we're going to move swiftly on to X264 and once again, we see it being at the top, that being, of course, the 2700X. And we see a result of 52, putting it just above the 2700X on the X370 motherboard. Of course, this again shows the improvements on the new 400 series. Oh, just one last thing quickly. We also see a similar improvement on the Cinebench results as well that you previously just looked at. So again, this is the importance of the 400 series. As of course, we did see these tests before, but obviously on this three on the 300 series. So once again, we're going to move on to 3D Mark, looking at both the new results and the old results. And while we don't see the Ryzen 7 2700X come in first, it is only a hair behind the 8700K, as we see a result for the 8700K of 16.84, and then a result on the 470 for the 2700X on 16.37, and then on the 370, sorry, the 370 motherboard, we see 16.27. So again, we see that improvement there. And once again, as we've seen across the results that I discussed yesterday, an improvement not only versus, say, the 8600K, but also versus the previous generation. As you can see, it is pretty much miles apart on this particular chart from the Ryzen 5s and even the 1700X as well. To finish off this revisit, we're just going to have a quick look at 3 d Mark Spy Time. So again, we see a very, very close race between the 8700K and the 2700X, but the 2700X does come out on top, as you can see with a result of 6.65 versus 6.56 for the 8700K. And we kind of see the same story repeated here versus the previous generations and, of course, versus the 8600K as well. So overall, across the results, as we saw in my video yesterday, kind of going tit for tat with the 8600K, sorry, 8700K rather, with kind of trading blows here and there, but we are definitely seeing why this is important to show the more complete picture. So again, my apologies for missing that segment out yesterday, but consider this my gift to you all. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you next time.